Hello, hello. Welcome back to Living by the F Word. I am so stoked to be talking about Departure Festival today, which is a five-day festival that is taking place in Playa del Carmen this week. As we speak, I should be packing, but instead I'm recording this video because I felt like there was no way that I could head down to departure and not talk about it. So today we're going to be talking about set times and the venues and a little bit about the promoters who are throwing this first edition of this festival down in Playa del Carmen, which is in the beautiful Rivera Maya area of Mexico. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jess. I talk about F-words that I am passionate about, and festivals is one of them. I absolutely love destination-style events, and as soon as City Fox dropped this lineup for departure, phase one, there was no question asked. It was sexy as fuck, and we were going. Then phase two came out. I pretty much squealed, and I was like, ah, because this lineup, you guys, is just, it's it's beautiful. It has everyone I could want on this lineup and more. So let's talk about who's throwing this festival before we get into the set times and some of the venues. So it is a collab project between Pollen, the Brooklyn Mirage, and City Fox. Now Pollen is a company that sells tickets to live music events, festivals, and bigger group experiences. The Brooklyn Mirage, if you're unfamiliar, is one of New York City's largest venues, especially for dance music, electronic music. They have a really nice venue that is outside. It really reminds me pretty much of a castle. There's upper levels and then it holds a capacity of about 5,000 people. So you could see a lot of really great acts there. And City Fox. We gotta talk about City Fox, you guys. I have been attending City Fox parties for so long, which is another reason why I had to jump on this event because they are just always killing it with the lineup. They always bring the best artists and that's because City Fox is number one, a record label, but also number two, they are very well known promoters within the New York City area. So they actually started off in Zurich, which is where they are from. And then in about 2010, I would say they came over and started building up the scene here in New York City. Now, I've been attending City Fox parties probably since 2015, which is when they decided to build the Brooklyn Mirage. So if you love the Brooklyn Mirage, you owe it to City Fox, okay? They are the reason the Brooklyn Mirage exists, and they actually will be uh, building a Playa Mirage down in Mexico for this festival. So it was just a no-brainer for me. I have been through it with City Fox. If anyone that is watching this has been to City Fox parties for years and years and years, you've been through it with them too. And what I mean by that is that they struggled to get the Brooklyn Mirage going, okay? There was a lot of issues as far as laws with New York City. Um, they were struggling to get alcohol permits and things like that. So there were times where I attended some of the first Brooklyn Mirage parties where there was zero alcohol. There was so many problems that they ran into. There was problems that they ran into when they did warehouse parties for Halloween. They have had lots of struggles and they stuck with it and they keep going. And that is why I will always support them because their parties are next level. So just a little bit of background about who's actually throwing this festival. And I just am so ecstatic to be there, honestly. All right, now let's talk about the location. The location is in Playa del Carmen, which is a very tourist beach town in Mexico. And it's about an hour and a half from Cancun, which makes it pretty accessible, especially if you're from the United States, to get to. If you're transiting through the United States, you can transit through most of the major hubs and get down to Cancun. And then you can drive the hour and a half down to Playa del Carmen. From Playa del Carmen, about an hour south from there, is Tulum. So it makes it very easy and accessible to hit all these beaches where there's a lot of electronic dance music acts and venues going on. There's a lot of parties and festivals that happen in Tulum as well. So this is kind of like a nice middle ground area. And not only that, the BPM Festival used to be located here. So when BPM first started... They were pretty much always in Playa del Carmen, and I had the most amazing time when it was in 
that city. So I just felt like I had to come back to this festival, especially because there really hasn't been a major festival in Playa del Carmen since 2017, which was BPM's 10 year anniversary. And unfortunately, there was a shooting in one of the clubs. And so there has not been a festival in this area since then. And that's why I was like, I need to full send to this because it is just absolute paradise. The water is beautiful. It's a really easy to get around type of city, in my opinion. Lots of um, things to check out if you want to, you know, do any extracurriculars. If you're into snorkeling, if you're into actually wanting to do some adventures, you can head down and see all of, um, you know, the Mayan ruins and things like that. There's just so much you can do at this destination. So, really happy to be back there. Okay, let's talk about the venues. Now I'm going to be referencing some notes. So if you see me look down, don't mind me, but there's no way I can memorize all this. And plus I need to get packing. <laughs> so, all right, first venue, and I'm just going to go in order from where they're located on the map. And I'm going to throw a map up for you, but I'm basically just going to go in that order. And then when I get to the set times, I'm probably going to stay in that order too, just so that my brain can kind of register, okay, that's there geographically, if that makes sense. So at first, the first venue is El Zorro, which is actually located at the Coco Mayo Beach Club. So this was a venue that the BPM Festival also had, and it's kind of like an indoor-outdoor venue. I will say that all these venues that Departure has located wise it's all beachfront so that's kind of cool because when bpm was there there was definitely there were some indoor clubs not everything was beachfront most of it was beachfront but they also had like a jungle location which i personally liked and was kind of hoping that departure would bring back that jungle type party but they're keeping it all beachfront at well-known clubs within the city so that's cool too because it just makes it easier to get around in my opinion so el zorro that's the first one which is yeah, Kokomaya, and that's also where the after hours are going to be located. So that's option number one. Then you have the Dawning, which is located at the Grand Hyatt Hotel, which is one of four partner hotels that Departure has. So for anyone that's actually staying at the Grand Hyatt, I mean, you're right on site at one of the venues. So that's pretty cool. And I do believe that they're doing an all-inclusive for people that are staying there. So that's pretty awesome as well because all your liquor is included. Don't quote me on that because I'm staying off site. So I don't know if that's totally accurate, but I'm pretty sure that is what I read up on when I was first buying tickets. All right, so as far as the distance between those two, that's about a seven minute walk we got going already. The next venue, which is going to be the Playa Mirage, that is at Mamitas. So that is pretty much only five minutes from the Grand Hyatt, which would then make it kind of like a 12 to 15 minute walk from El Zorro, that first venue I was talking about. Then we have Andromeda. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that is going to be the last venue. So there's four venues total, and that one is going to be located at Martina. So all of these, with the exception of the Grand Hyatt, which is also on the beach, but all these other beach clubs are already established beach clubs. And they are on the waterfront, and I'm really excited to see how they set this festival up as it has like pools these these venues have pools but then they're also on the beach and then like I said they're actually building a Playa Mirage at I think it's what is it yeah Mamitas so that venue as far as I could tell I don't know if they're going to be building the Mirage on the actual sand I don't know pretty cool but between the Playa Mirage and Andrew Meta the, that venue they have like a beach route that they have on the map and it seems like it's going to cut that walking time like kind of in half. If you, and if you had to take the roads, it would be a longer walk, but they have this beach route. So it might be like for festival attendees only possibly where you can walk that way or you could just walk on the beach. I think that's pretty much what they're going to have people do is just walk on the beach. And then once you get to that entrance, you'll have to obviously clear security with your wristband and all that. So altogether, very centralized locations as far as the venues with max 20 minutes walk in between all of them so that's pretty sweet all right let's get into these set times which whew, my heart you guys there's some conflicts of course but I'm just going to like I said read off in the order of the venue order that I just went in from where they're located on the map so it might not necessarily match 
the actual set times flyer that I will have up on the screen as well. So I'm just going to go off of day one, which is Thursday, January 6th. At El Zorro, we have Milo Spikers, Gerard Fargo, and Amelie Lentz. Then at the dawning, we have Durango 95, Serge Devant, sorry if I'm pronouncing any of these wrong, Damian Lazarus, and Seth Troxler. On Thursday, the Ply Mirage is closed. That's probably because they're probably going to still need extra time to build it and probably because most people, at least that are attending this festival, I would imagine are kind of like an older crowd that they might not be able to get off work for all those days. And so they might not have the grand opening until Friday. So Playa Mirage is closed, but they do have the other venue open and Dometa, which I really wonder how you pronounce that. I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong. And there you will have Joseph Ashworth, Tom and Collins, Dusky, Yodo, and Norm Pure. All right. So as far as those parties that are going on, the one that I just mentioned, Andromeda, that's like all house and deep house. All those artists are straight up house and deep house. Um, Tom and Collins, they are a UK duo, and I really enjoy their... um, their style as well as Dusky. I feel like a lot of these artists are people that have banger tracks that you've probably heard in other sets by people but didn't realize who it was. And those two that I just mentioned are those types of people. Um, then you have Yodo, who also very well na- well known. Um, I enjoyed his set of elements. It was really great to see. And then we have Nora Pure, who is just obviously beautiful deep house artist and representing some of the uh, females on this lineup. So that is all looking good. That entire party is all looking good. Then we have at El Zorro, a lot of these artists, this is going to be your techno. So Milo Spikers, Arado, Far. Virago, if I'm sorry if I'm saying these wrong, and then Amelie Lenz. That's all techno. So if you're into techno, that is where you want to be. And then you have The Dawning, which is Durango 95, Serge Devant, and Damien Lazarus, and Seth Troxler, which is kind of more, I would say, lots of experimental house, tech house, that type of vibe. Okay, so Friday, day two, we have, uh, let's see, at El El Zorro, we have Escuche, I feel like I'm saying all these names wrong. Kaz James, Latmune, Lee Foss, and Annabelle Ungland, and then Vintage Culture. Whew. Okay, you guys, this is all house and tech house. I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely want to see Lat Latmune. Lat <laughs> I want to see Latmune so bad. Like he is tech house through and through, and I fucking love his sound. He was one of my top artists for Spotify, my Spotify playback for 2021. Only thing that sucks is that it completely conflicts with Mason Mayard, who's going to be on Solardo's stage. So it's like, ugh, there's so many conflicts. But anyway, let's go back to what I was talking about. I'm going to get all of course here because honestly, this is just like literally underground heaven like I can't even right now looking at all this anyway all right so you have Kaz James who is a Australian artist um who I've never seen so it'd be nice to see like this whole party honestly it would be nice to see I've obviously seen Lee Foss a million times and you can't go wrong with him and he's going to be with Anna. Annabelle Uglin, who is a very well-known vocalist within the electronic dance music space, and she's also a DJ. So, like, you can't really go wrong with their sound. It's just so good. And then you have Vintage Culture, who I have been listening to Vintage Culture for so long. However, he has totally blown up, has had so many tracks and singles he's put out in 2021 and a few years prior as well, and just kind of has really been, his growth has been unreal in the last year or so. So I feel like that whole party is just fire. Um, Also at that venue for After Hours, we have DJ Tennis and Black Coffee. Straight fire. DJ Tennis, I mean, he's Italian, but he's lived in the United States, I feel like, for the most part, most of his career. Um, Always a staple as far as underground lineups. He is always, always on these lineups. And I feel like he just has such a good house sound, um, tech house sound, kind of like more melodic at, at times, really, really nice. And then, of course, Black Coffee, 
legendary house artist as well. All right, you guys, I'm back. I don't know what happened, but I just reformatted my memory card on my camera because it keeps saying that it's full, even though there should be plenty of space on it. So I don't know what's up, but let's get back into what I was talking about. And of course, I'm not ready, but I started filming. Standard just moved there. <laughs> Okay, so back to the dawning, which is where I got cut off. Basically, on that lineup for Solardo's party, um, his record label, Sola, is going to be Manu Gonzalez, Sosa, Mason Maynard, and Solardo. So, honestly, I am so torn because, first of all, we're only talking about the first two parties right now. And Latmune and Mason Maynard are on at the same exact time. Fuck. Because <laughs> Mason Maynard is really up and coming and his house sound is so good. And he's done collabs with people like Gene Ferris, who is absolutely incredible. And he just has this amazing house sound with some really good bass lines. And it's just like, mm, it's so good. Like, excuse me, DJ. You know that track? Oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> Uh, it's already so hard. And then Lap Moon, like I said, is tech house through and through. Like, I love his sound. Like, there's no doubt about it. He's straight up tech house. So I just don't know what I'm going to do there. Really good parties so far. So after that, we also have an Andrew Meta full techno party hosted by Adam Bayer's Drum Code. That's his record label. And we have all the techno at this party. We have Miss Mata, Leighton Giordani, Irano Alcante, Dubfire, Ana, B2B, Sama Abudali, which is like two techno queens going B2B. Absolutely going to be fucking amazing. I can already tell. Then we have Nicole Mudebear and then Adam Bayer. So full-blown techno party at Andromeda. And then we have the opening of the Playa Mirage. First night, Playa Mirage is going to be opened. We have Tara Brooks, who I feel like is just kind of like a house staple, especially on the West Coast. Her style is very dreamy to me. Like, I just feel like it's very dreamlike. That's the best descriptor I could give as far as her house music. Very talented artist. Then we have Zombies in Miami, who I have never seen. But what I like about them from what I've listened to is they have kind of like this disco house vibe and they're kind of like very versatile as far as their sound. So they kind of can go all over the place. Then we have Adam Port, B2B, and me for the sunset set. And then we have DJ Tennis and Black Coffee. And that is going to be also the after party that night. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. This is this video is pretty fucked. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, let's go off of El Zorro. We have Mystery Affair, Cassie, DJ Harvey and Peggy Gao. I don't know if I'm saying her name right either. Um... I do have all these artists on playlists. If you guys want to listen, go check them out. Peggy, yeah, she was uh, on the Phase 2 lineup and is pretty well known. Um, all right. Then we have, let's see, over at the Dawning, we have Mike Montano, Sacro, Tom and Collins, and Betoko. So those are all house artists. Then we have at Andrew Meta, we have Liam Fitzgerald, DJ Puma, Sita Avalon, Michael Beebe, and the Martinez brothers. So you kind of have a really good mix there of house, some tech house as well. I would love to see Michael Beebe alone. I did just see Michael Beebe, B2B, the Martinez brothers at EDCO. So I might have to pass up on that because at the Playa Mirage, the lineup there is like so many people that I want to see. So you have Chloe Calette. Uh, or Chloe Callette, sorry if I'm saying this wrong, Mathame, I want to see these guys so bad. I'm really kind of surprised they have an earlier time slot. Um, to me, they are techno, but more on the melodic side. Um, like, as they, they really remind me of Adriatic, and Adriatic is, like, one of my favorite artists. So I really want to see those guys. They are Italian, and they are brothers. And I think their story is pretty cool because they – basically moved to their parents' farm, I think, during the pandemic, and then they started creating music together, and then they just kind of blew up, so it's kind of cool. Really would like to see them. Then we have Seth Vath, who is going to do the Sunset set. Very well-known artist within the underground. Honestly, like, just a complete legend. Then we have Stefan 
um, Bodzin live, who I really would like to see as well because I created playlists of all these artists and I really, really like this guy's sound and I've never seen him. And then closing out that party, we have Dixon B2B AIM, which they are just City Fox staples. They are pretty much on every single City Fox party. They are the owners of Inner Visions Record, and their record label, Inner Visions, is really versatile because they never really have the same type of artists on their record label. So they are playing that party, but they also were announced that TBA that was on the El Zorro for After Hours, they have been announced as the After Hours from 12.30 to 4 a.m. So I feel like you're going to get plenty of uh, Dixon B2B aim. So, I mean, you really can bounce around. I might go see Peggy Gal. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but I want to try to see some new artists. Like, I've seen the Martinez Brothers before, seen Michael Beebe before, so kind of want to check some new people out if possible um so i might skip out early on the dixon b2b aim since they're playing the after party too okay so the next day once again starting with el zorro we have day four we have layla benitez risen Kristoff, and camel fat <laughs> That whole lineup is just so fucking fire right there. I feel like that's all pretty much house tech house. Like, it's a lot of tech house, I think. But Risen, up and coming. Kristoff, love their sound. And then Camel Fat. I mean, you can't go wrong. And it's a four-hour set. That is just fucking next level. And then for the after hours, later that night, you have Adriatic, who absolutely one of my favorite artists they are a techno duo but like I said I feel like they're more on the melodic side I just love them they are on Solomon's um, dynamic label and I've been a fan of theirs for years so they're also playing earlier at another venue but definitely will probably be at that after party and then Mind Against is before them so um, another tech house artist there okay then we have at the Andromeda So now I'm going out of order, so nothing in this video makes sense, you guys. Fuck me. Sorry. Just trying to get this out there quickly. Um, Let's see. We have Connie Amame. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Tim Englehart Live and him. Monolink Live and then Lee Burridge. So I feel like... um, and him, they're, they're a DJ duo that have some really popular tracks that you've probably heard in other people's sets. Um, they are House Monolink. I am obsessed with. I love Monolink, but I've seen him so many times. So I don't know if I would go see someone new or if I'm going to go see him. But his sound is just incredible because he performs live. He has a guitar and he DJs and he sings. And so it's just completely incredible and there's been a lot of great remixes of his tracks so I just absolutely love him and then he closed and then Lee Burridge is the closer for that party and Lee Burridge to me is one of those artists where he's kind of like like a longtime friend of yours it doesn't matter how long you've been separated once you pick back up together it's like not there was no separation you know what I mean and that's how I feel with his music I just feel like You cannot see him for years and then go to one of his sets and it just brings you right back. And I just feel like he is such an incredible person and house music artist. So, I mean, I don't know if I will be there. Um, You know, he's really well known for his record label, All Day I Dream and all those parties. So if you've been to those, then you definitely know who Lee Burridge is. But with Camel Fat, oh, it's really hard. And then not only that, we have also City Fox Presents, obviously, at the Playa Mirage. Now, this party is so fire. We have um, Desire, DJ Set, Dory, Mind Against, and then we have, um, I feel like I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Recondite? I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. Adriotic and then Maceoplex. So I feel like for me, Adriotic and Maceoplex, those are some of like my favorite techno artists. Like their sound is just incredible. Uh, I don't know. It's just so hard. I feel like I don't know where I'll be at. But like I said, I feel like the bouncing around is going to be kind of hard to do. And it's like I feel like with this style of music, it's really beneficial to see a full set. I feel like when you start chopping up the sets, that's when you really miss something beautiful. So we'll see the final day there's only two venues open you have el zorro which is open and there's climbers jimmy jules georgia angu 
Glee, Carlita, and then Matthew Decay, B2B Yuku. I feel like Carlita and the Matthew Decay, B2B Yuku is going to be really, really amazing. Um, but then on the flip side, you have Mike Montano, Ben Sterling, Ilana Nico, and then you have a special six hour B4B with Jamie Jones, Joseph Capriotti, Luciano, and Marco Carolla. So this is a Paradise Party, which is Jamie Jones' record label, and the four of those that are going B4B are literally, like, absolutely iconic. Um, you know, you have Joseph Capriati, who's techno, Jamie Jones, who's, like, house, tech house. Um, I would say more on the house techno side, though. Um, not, like, straight techno, though. There's a lot of, like, these artists I would consider techno that are, like, more, like, melodic techno, if that makes sense. Um, Marco Carolla, him too. I mean, I just feel like whew, that's going to be so fire. I don't know where I'm going to end up for that day. I feel like this is going to be so hard, but I just kind of wanted to talk about the festival a little bit before I throw up any vlogs. So maybe you know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry, it's so last minute. I have been adulting hardcore. I have been away from home working for my job. I'm a flight attendant. I'm a flight attendant instructor. I've been doing that. Then I just got back from a three-day trip and now I have to pack for this festival. So I've just been so busy and like had zero time to creating content. But I hope to see you on the dance floor. I hope to see you at departure. I absolutely cannot wait. If you are going to be there, please subscribe and you will see all the vlogs that I put out afterwards. And please, please say hello to me if you see me there. I cannot wait first festival of festival season for 2022. Let's get it. See you on the dance floor and I will see you in the next video. Peace.